In today's video, I do a review of the Algo Laser Pixie. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you what the GGGGs are for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of August of 2025, we have three copies of the Delian Tomb, the starter adventure for the Draw Steel RPG. We have five pledges for Second Dynasty's expendable STL files that's currently on Frontiers. $100 to go towards a crowdfunding campaign, which my Patreon supporters are currently voting upon. And then finally, this actual model will be included as part of this month's gratitude gifts. Go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page where you can get in on this possibility of being chosen by Bob to receive one of these gratitude gifts. Remember, it only takes a dollar to become a Patreon member. So I've done a number of review videos for lasers and I've used them in the gaming hobby to create terrain as well as tokens. And even though my channel is primarily focused on 3D printing, there's a number of applications where actually using a laser is much, much faster, especially in creating inserts for your board games as well as anything that's like a box or a card holder. We can take your 3D printer six hours to print out. You can create in a laser in less than 10 minutes. And go ahead and check out my video of the Algo Laser that I reviewed a while back. But they went ahead and sent me this for review, even though I do not receive any payment, nor do I have an affiliate link. The link that's in the description below goes directly to their website if you want to purchase this. Now let me get the pricing out right off the bat. This is going to be cheaper than your standard framed laser that I typically have used in the past where those are going to cost anywhere between $800 to about $1,100 for anywhere between a 20 to a 40 watt laser. And this is going to be half of that cost with the most expensive 10 watt option at right under $400 US. There is a 3 watt option that's about $100 cheaper than that as well as a 5 watt option that's about $340. But I want to say right now, probably you don't want to get the 3 watt option. In the least, I would suggest getting the 5 watt. Ultimately though, if you are going to be cutting materials, I would definitely opt for the 10 watt. Now having said that about pricing, one of the first things you're going to notice is this thing is tiny compared to the large framed diode lasers that you see out there. And probably the biggest selling feature about this is that you don't need to hook it up to your laptop or computer in order to field the SVG files into it to make your prints. Now you can do that and other people's laser software of choice is Lightburn and that's going to give you a lot of robust features and you can definitely use that for here. And if you're going to be making a lot of custom pieces or if you want to have a lot of control over the laser, I would still say go ahead and use Lightburn. It's definitely worth it. But if you're just hobbying, if you are not wanting to hook it up to a laptop, this is the first machine that I know of that enables you to laser without having any light burn or any computer hooked up to it. So as you can see, this is a small form factor and I think this would go well as a beginner laser. And for just the casual hobbyist who wants to make maybe some keychains or some trinkets or um, engrave on uh, small pieces, this is perfect for it. And because you don't have to hook it up to a computer, you can download your own images via a SD card. But I found that there's actually a lot of preloaded images that are inside of this machine. So that's what I ended up printing out. And as you can see here, I have a couple of images and they turned out really nice and clean. The other feature that is unique about this is that you are able to write on this touch screen with a pen or even with your finger and it will actually laser that onto the image. You can resize it, whatever size that you want. I think that's a super unique feature that I haven't seen in other places. So again, I think the target audience for this machine really is a person who is just trying out or getting into lasering, someone who doesn't want to hook up to a computer in order to run the machine. Or I think this would be fantastic if you brought it 
to a fair where you're selling laser engraved items and you can quickly personalize an item. You can take it and maybe engrave their name on there because there is a type pad if you don't wanna make it handwritten, if you don't wanna have the client handwrite their name on there to put it on the item, you can just type it out and you would be able to engrave very quickly with this machine without it taking up a lot of space. So I think that would be a perfect application for this because it is so small and so portable. It doesn't have autofocus, which almost all of my machines that I've used in the past doesn't have autofocus either, but it's relatively easy because they provide you with this little measuring tool and you set it down and you just um, use a knob to move it up and down until it hits the top of this. Super simple to focus that way. And another fantastic feature that I found is just safety wise, the machine won't really turn on unless this is fully down. So if you're using this machine, maybe with kids around, this ensures that no one's gonna get hurt or accidentally burnt. Now, because I used stock that sort of stuck out and this couldn't close all the way, I'm glad that there is an override feature where you're able to turn on the laser without this going all the way down. So I'm grateful for that kind of flexibility, but I do believe that the machine is really safe. And there is an option to vent this. So if you're gonna be lasering indoors and you have a venting system, a powered venting system, there is a way to do that. Although I do all of my lasering outside because you get a powerful burn smell from whatever stock or material that you're doing, especially if you are lasering in acrylic or anything plastic, those fumes are toxic. My recommendation overall is to do these outdoors where you have plenty of ventilation, unless you have a really good system indoors to vent those fumes out. Also, you have to remember that looking at a laser beam will hurt your eyes, so it does come with protective glasses, but you do additionally have these protective covers here that's going to prevent you from burning your eyes by looking at the laser. So I really appreciate the safety features that are found here. Also, I do know that there is an option for a rotary. So if you want to be lasering on cups or on curved objects, you do have the option of getting the rotary. I didn't have that, but if you do, there's a way that you can raise this entire unit up and down to account for the additional height that is there. I also think the interface and control up here is highly intuitive. It isn't super complicated, so I just experimented scrolling through the different options that are found. And there is an operating system integrated into this board so that you don't have to convert files to SVG. You can uh, send in JPEGs or PNGs and the machine will convert it for you, which I think is fantastic. The other thing that I really like about this is you are able to precisely place where the laser is gonna be on the machine because the grid appears right here in the interface. That is super handy. Once I did unbox this, it was up and running right away. I did have to update the firmware after hooking it up to my Wi-Fi. That was really quick. And then once I plugged it in, turned it on, um, set the focal point for the laser, I was up and running very, very quickly. So no assembly required. The number one downside that you're gonna have with this machine is the size. So because the print volume here is about the size of my hand, um, you're gonna be limited in the projects that you can do. So for the most part, I might be able to use this for things like creating keychains, for creating tokens, for gaming. That would be really easy to do here. And there is enough cutting power where you can create tokens. But in terms of making a lot of terrain, I do think the size limitation is gonna keep you from making a lot of terrain or even inserts for board games. And at that point, you might wanna go with the larger regular format, but it does become exponentially more complicated because you have to learn how to use Lightburn as your input into those machines. I didn't do a lot of testing because I knew that this was gonna be a giveaway. I wanted to keep it as pristine as possible, but look at these images. I think they look fantastic. In particular, the engraving of this dog looks fantastic. And I've done a number of photograph engravings just for family and friends. And that's one of the cool gift ideas that I've made from my lasers. And I will say that the quality does match the quality that I can get from the more expensive machines. This is a relatively quick video. Go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. And again, if you are interested in the possibility of being chosen by Bob to receive this machine, 
go ahead and go to my Patreon page where you can get in on that. The draw is going to be at the last Sunday of this month. Happy lasering. We'll see you next time.